Welcome to Dongit's Model Railway. Today I am commissioning a new locomotive for the railway. I need to fit a DCC decoder to it and configure it for predictable speed response and constant distance ABC braking. This loco is a Vitrain's Class 37 I have obtained second hand from a well known auction site. I know it has been run previously as the couplings are fitted, but the rest of the detail pack has not been fitted and is still present in the box. As a result, I suspect it hasn't been run much and has probably lived in its box most of its life. I have test run it myself on DC to confirm it is working before trying to fit a decoder. Getting the body off these locos is a matter of unclipping all four corners. The clips are above the rear axle on each bogey and stick out quite far. It may help to use a piece of plastic to hold one side of the body away from the chassis while getting the other side disengaged. Once all four of the tabs are out, the body and chassis will slide apart smoothly. These locos are DCC ready with an 8 pin socket. My trains cheaped out a bit in regard to the socket though. The blanking plug on these locos is not a proper 8 pin blanking plug. It's just two triangular folded metal pieces which each short three of the pins together in the socket. Electrically that's fine, but mechanically they are a bit more of a challenge to get out than a standard blanking plug. You don't want to be breaking off one of the pins inside the socket. You'll need to prise them up with something small. I use a pair of fine tweezers to get them out. I'm fitting a Zimo MX600R decoder to this locomotive. Most of my fleet use this decoder, it's my go-to 8-pin decoder. It's got a great feature set, including handling ABC braking really well, and it's only marginally more expensive than the cheapest decoders out there. Another problem with Vitrain's locos is they didn't mark pin 1 on the PCB. The NMRI standard says this must be done, but this PCB does not have it marked. The best way I have found to identify which way around the decoder needs to go in these locos is that pin 3 is not connected. With careful observation it should be clear which pin doesn't have a PCB track leading away from it. This is pin 3 and this needs to connect to the green wire on the decoder. If you do get the decoder around the wrong way it's not going to kill it so don't worry. The main problem you'll have is that the lights don't work. If you're not confident in your decoder installation, test the chassis before refitting the body. When you do refit the body, make sure you put it on the right way round. Look for clues in the detail on the body and the chassis, like steps lining up between the tanks and the body. Check against pictures if you aren't sure. Particularly with a second hand loco where the body may have been removed by the previous owner, don't assume it was the right way round when you got it. As I have several Vitrain's Class 37s already, I'm going to start out with the values I used on a previous loco. I'm guessing they won't be too far out for this one either. When tuning the decoder, first you must tune the maximum speed. If you tune the braking distance first and then the maximum speed afterwards, you will need to retune the braking distance again, as it will have changed when the maximum speed was changed. I am using a basic method to test and tune loco maximum speed that anyone can follow. All I have is a measured distance of 3 meters between the blue and red stock boxes, and I also have a stopwatch. The loco is set up ready to go far enough away from the first box that the acceleration curve will be complete and the loco running at a steady speed by the time it goes past that first box. I run the loco at the maximum speed on the controller and time how long it takes to get from the start to the end. Speed is distance divided by time. But to avoid doing maths all the time, I have a pre-calculated table which translates real speed to scale speed in 4 millimeters per foot and from there to a 3 meter time. That run I timed at 5.96 seconds. I want this loco to run at a prototypical 80 mile an hour, so I want it to take around 6.4 seconds to complete the run. 
Let's put it back on the programming track and tweak the value. I'm using JMRI's Decoder Pro here. This gives me a graphical way to set up a decoder without needing to know the details of CV numbers or bit mask patterns or anything like that. Using this method, there is an accuracy problem. A human's ability to start and stop a timer to a visual cue is limited to about 0.2 seconds accuracy. If you want to improve the accuracy beyond this threshold, you'll need to use a more accurate timing method. One of the things I could do is use the track occupancy detector. If I calculate the exact length of one of the blocks, I can use the time between when this block is occupied and the next block that comes occupied, and that will give me a much more accurate timing. To get a nice linear response from the controller, I want 50% speed on the controller to be 50% speed on the layout. If this loco runs at 80 miles an hour at 100%, I want it to run at roughly 40 miles an hour at 50%. It should take about twice as long to cover the distance at half the speed. Double the time is 12.8 seconds in this case. That's about a second too fast. I need to slow that down. I'm adjusting the V-mid speed here, which controls how the decoder responds to 50% throttle. If you have a particularly recalcitrant loco that won't give a smooth speed response using these basic settings, there's also a full speed table which allows much more customization. But this loco is responding fine using the basic settings, so I don't need the full table. Now we have the speed right, we can tune the stopping distance. It's currently pulling up much too sharp, so I'll extend the stopping distance to bring it closer to the desired stopping point. It's a bit better, but I'm sure I can get closer than that. OK, I'm happy with that one. Let's test this at different speeds to make sure it's consistent. Not all DCC decoders are equal when it comes to ABC braking. Some have only a basic implementation, where they brake to a crawl immediately upon going into the ABC section, then crawl up to the distance specified and hard stop when they get there. The best ones will delay braking until braking to a stand will bring them smoothly to the stopping location. All current Zimo decoders are in the latter category, even this budget-friendly MX600R. It's pretty consistent at 25% speed too, so I don't think I need any sensation for speed. I do need to try it out at different places on the layout, and also facing the other way, to make sure it will stop consistently no matter what the conditions are. If you want to see more of my layout as I continue to develop it, please subscribe. It doesn't cost me anything more than an extra. If you like this video, there's a button below for that too. And if you've got any questions or suggestions, feel free to write me a comment. See you next time on Dongit's Model Railway.